Hi everyone, Jai Mata Di. So in visionary package, what other things do we have? Let's see in details. Now let us start with manometer. Now manometer is one of the most important devices. Why I covered it over here? Because you are going to take the reading on manometer on each day when you are going to take engine room round. It plays a very important role. So first of all, guys, again, what is a manometer? Why is it required? Where is it required? Everything has been covered in detail over here. Cop it, and then moving ahead. Let's see. So what is a manometer? Why and where is it required? How we interpret the manometer readings on ship? This is very very important. Knowing why and how to interpret because you are going to take those readings. Many a times when you take a wrong reading, you are going to get scolding. And if the reading changes suddenly, you need to know why it is changing. You need to be smart engineer. There were times when the main engine load changed. I saw the reading. I was very hard here. I used to get baffled, confused. Why it has changed? And then my second year used to laugh at me. I said, "Tere ko ye bhi nahi aata hai." So it happens. Nothing wrong with that. So this is where I am explaining the theory part. So manometer is fitted on turbocharger. Manometer is fitted on air cooler. Manometer is fitted on exhaust gas boilers. How it works? How do we calculate the readings? How do we interpret those readings? That is very very important. So this is the theory part that I am discussing over here. So I am discussing where they are fitted. I am even discussing the formula where we put in the engine room logbook reading. We put that. These are very very important parts. So I am over here discussing what the main engine. It is put on main engine air cooler as well. If your manometer reading increases, what can be the reason? Whether it is the load increase in load on main engine, or is it because the air cooler air side is getting choked? You need to find. You need to be smart over here. So that has been discussed. So this is over here, right, guys? Again, coming to manometer engine room round. When I come to manometer engine room round. So over here, I am showing you a manometer fitted on main engine turbocharger. I am going to show you how we take a reading over here. I am going to show you what happens if reading increases or decreases. What is this blue color filter fitted? Everything in practical out here, guys. I take you after explaining each and everything on the main engine turbocharger thing. After calculating the reading over here, as you can see, it is 80 mm right now, 80 mm water column. Then I take you near to the. Again, I am explaining each and everything, and then again taking you. So this is where I am going to take you right now. This is main engine air cooler. There is a manometer fitted over here, and over here also we are going to calculate the reading. What if the water decreases in manometer? How do we fulfill that? How do we calculate the reading if manometer has got less water? That has also been discussed over here. Some practical examples which you need to know as well. Now another most important topic that is pressure gauge, guys. Again, pressure gauges play a very important role. You need to know how a pressure gauge works. What is pressure? What is vacuum? What is a compound pressure gauge? What is atmospheric pressure? What is gauge pressure? So all these things. What is atmospheric pressure? Gauge pressure. Different types of gauges. How to read a pressure gauge, which is very important. Different units to measure a pressure. How to order a pressure gauge? Why is pressure gauge fitted? Role of glycerin in pressure gauge. All these questions are covered in this video. So a lot of theory has been explained in this video out here. As you can see, I am talking about atmospheric pressure. Then what is pressure? What is gauge pressure? What is absolute pressure? What is vacuum gauge? What is compound gauge? What is pressure gauge? So over here I am discussing what is absolute pressure. That is atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure. You need to know that. Now I have got a live pressure gauge in hand, and I am showing you this pressure gauge. I am showing you the various readings. How to see the reading? How to check the reading? How how not to get confused? Because this same pressure gauge has got reading in green, black. and red how to know which one is correct and not so everything is discussed over here guys this is the vacuum gauge that i am discussing so this is how are we going to read how do, do we get the least count of a pressure gauge and how do we read a pressure gauge is over here so guys why i am so finicky about telling you how to read a pressure gauge because these are the mistakes that i have made when i was on ship now this is not this is 2.4 bar not 2.2 bar so Why this is important? Because your second year is going to tell you go check the reading. You can tell it wrong, but if you tell it right, it will make a good impression that yes, he is a smart engineer. Different readings, these things can be asked in your interview, guys. They have been asked. These are simple things. If you know, Jai Mata Di. Convergence, basic convergence. Now I am talking about types of pressure gauge. How to order a pressure gauge? The range is important. What all factors are important while ordering a pressure gauge? These are the questions that are asked even in MEO class four. What if you answer them in your marine engineering college placement interview? Rocking, right? Why is glycerin added? Another very important video. Cop it. Now let's take a live pressure gauge round. See all the pressure gauges fitted at different different parts of the ship on different different pumps, and let us analyze their pressures. What is their role? Say for example, 
the first pressure gauge that I am seeing is fitted on the hydrophore system. Now, first of all, we have to identify whether it's a pressure gauge or a compound gauge or a vacuum gauge. Then what is the unit? See, the unit is an MPA. So I'm explaining what does MPA mean? MPA means megapascal. 10 bar is equal to 1 megapascal. So now the reading out here is 5 bars, it is 0.5 MPA. So that is how you read a pressure gauge over here. Then I take you forward. I take you to a pump where a suction and a discharge pressure gauge is fitted. Now if you'll see carefully, the suction side pressure gauge is a compound gauge and the discharge side pressure gauge is a dis just a pressure gauge. How do you read? That is very important. How do you see whether it's in vacuum or not? That is very important. What is the unit? That is very important. That has been discussed over here. Similarly, for various other places out here, like I'm going taking you down below. We are standing near the freshwater generator. I am talking about a vacuum gauge fitted out here because freshwater generator works in vacuum. Then move ahead. So let's go to the other part. So after taking the measuring the reading, calculating the reading on the freshwater generator, I'm moving ahead. So let's go to the other place. That is I'm going to the fuel oil system and I'm going to see the pressure on the fuel oil supply pump. So let's see the suction and the discharge pressure gauges over here and how much are they reading? What is the reading? If any, if there is there any faulty pressure gauge fitted out there? Now out here I'm going to show you other kinds of pressure gauges fitted in the sea water line. How do we measure? What do we check over here? The, di the diameter is different, the dial is different, the range is different. All these things have been discussed. The connectors are even being discussed over here. Can you see this? And now in the last, you will be getting a question of the day. Read the pressure gauge and write it in the answers of these three pressure gauges. Copy it. So if you can answer it well, I'll be very happy. Then now, once this pressure gauge is entered, guys, pumps. One of the most important thing, whether you go for G whether you are a GME aspirant, whether you are a marine engineering student worried about campus placement or a GME college student about to go on ship and he wants to perform well or even a class 4 student or a 4th engineer or 3rd engineer pumps is really crucial and a lot of things like first of all a pump engine room round out here guys I am going to discuss about let me show you first what I am going to discuss let it come I am going to discuss the group starter panels what are those I am going to discuss about various pumps settled in engine room and we will also learn in detail about types and capacities while taking engine room round of different pumps. Copy it. So here we start. So first I am talking about the group starter panels. Kya hote hai? How is a standby pump fitted? How does a standby pump work? What is local? What is remote? How do we switch the breaker off? How do we know whether it's a centrifugal pump or not? Each and everything is discussed out here. Now from the group starter panels then I take you to take a round of engine room. See, this is where I'm standing that is near the ballast pump and I'm explaining what is the use of ballast pump over here, what is its capacity, whether it's a centrifugal pump or not. Similarly, I've done it for mostly all the pumps on board ship. Like right now I'm standing, I'm getting out from the ballast pump and I'll be taking you to the fire and GS pump over here and I'll be discussing the fire pump. Now this fire and GS pump has got its own purpose that has been discussed in the video and then it has also got a vacuum pump fitted now what is the purpose of a vacuum pump why is it fitted that has also been discussed over here one of the very important videos even for fourth engineers and if you know who is joining ship for the first time you will earn respect on ship moving ahead so guys during this engine room round which is of 17 18 minutes i have covered each and every pump fitted on board ship Copied. So none of the pumps are left, whether they are a centrifugal pump or a positive displacement pump, they have been discussed in details. So out here I am talking about a centrifugal pump fitted. How do I know it's a centrifugal pump? That is what I am discussing over here. Just by looking at a pump, can you make out if it's a centrifugal pump or not? That has been discussed over here. How does a pump change over when one pump falters, especially in crucial systems? That has been discussed over here. So there are a lot of stuffs that I have covered in this section. These are main engine fuel oil supply pumps. So keeping it short guys, each and every pump fitted in engine room has been discussed in detail over here. Let's go for a pump characteristic curve round. Now guys, pump characteristic curve plays a very very important role on board ship. And the simple reason why is because I have talked to 4th engine, I have talked to 3rd engine, you guys read or mug up the characteristic curve but you do not understand its practical implication. And that's why in this particular video, I have discussed that in detail, giving live practical examples. Like for centrifugal pump, if the motor amperage has increased, it can never, not just be that the bearing has got damaged, but one of the most important reasons can be maybe the flow has increased, you need to find out. 
In other cases, if it's a positive displacement pump, if the motor amperage has increased, the reason can be the discharge pressure in the line. So, uh, in centrifugal pump, it's the flow that matters. In, in positive displacement pump, it's the pressure, discharge line pressure that matters. That is what I'm discussing over here. Cop it. And just to explain this part, a lot of animation has been covered. A lot of animation has been discussed, matlab, covered in this video, so that you get a proper idea of what I'm talking about. Say out here, I'm discussing about the amperage part and everything, about a centrifugal pump, about a positive displacement pump, then here comes the animation part. What happens if a positive displacement pump is running? What will happen to the amperage and the pressure? Are they simultaneously linked? That is what is being discussed out here. Similarly, when I talk about a centrifugal pump, these are the various discussions happening. This is the animation of centrifugal pump, that is main sea water pump. It is, this is the line diagram somewhat closer to the original line diagram on board ship. And then I am discussing the flow, the pressure and the amperage out here. So, if you understand this well, Jai Mata Di. Your basic concepts are clear, bang on. Next is pump priming. As we know guys on centrifugal pumps, pump priming is very very important because if centrifugal pumps takes in air then uh, they lose suction. So out here I am showing you actually how to prime a pump. So that is what is being discussed out here. What is priming? Why is it important? First of all comes the theory part guys. I am explaining it theoretically what I will do. I am explaining each and every part in theory out here. And then later on I am going to take you for a practical round showing you practically what needs to be done. See this is where I am going to carry out the priming of a centrifugal pump of fresh water hydrophore line. So that is what is being done over here. So let's see from the vent. So now the hydrophore water is hydrophore tank is filled filling with water. So how the priming happened that has been discussed in this video in detail. Another important video is guys pump automatic changeover. See very there are a lot of important pumps fitted on board ship and if one pump fails it's a machine it can fail any time. The standby pump needs to take over immediately so that there is no harm to the bigger machine right. And how does that happen? How does the pump automatic changeover take place? It's a part of automation but I believe it has been explained in a very simplistic way. If you understand it you are going to perform good on ship you'll understand the logic the concept. What safeties are there in case if an important pump stops accidentally or fails? What is pump automatic changeover? What causes pumps auto changeover? Don't forget to take engine room now. That has been discussed in detail over here. Copy it guys. So first of all again, as usual, the theory part coming into play. Can you see that? And then me taking you to live engine room round. Showing you each and every part that I have discussed out there. Copy it. So this is where you can start the pump. Where is the pressure switch fitted? I am going to discuss that as well. Everything has been covered out here. So I guess it makes sense when in the pump section. Now, okay, this is the pressure transmitter fitted. What does the pressure transmitter mean? What does the pressure switch mean? That has also been covered in this video. Very, very important. Coming to the engine round, engine room round, guys. There's a detailed engine room round while engine room is running. If you know how to take an engine room round, guys, you'll be a smart engineer. All your five senses need to come into play, and that is what has been discussed in this 33 minutes long video out here. It's a long video, but very important. Copy it, guys. So out here, I'm taking a detailed engine room round. I'm showing you various aspects. What all you need to check? Uh, how do you check the alarm history? What all you need to check while taking a round of the pump? How to check a pump casing? What all you need to observe in terms of sound, smell, feel, touch? So everything has been covered in details out here, guys. Just moving forward, giving you a small look. So talking about proper watch keeping out here as well. So this is the engine room round being taken at night and everything is being discussed out here. After this, let's go to the line tracing part. Now tracing line is one of, is an art guys. If you understand, if you know it, you are going to do well on ship. Even as a chief engineer, I need to trace lines at times to understand what is happening wrong in the system. So that is where tracing line comes and that is what we are doing right now as of now over here. So I'm going to trace one of the lines. I'm going to share the important importance of tracing a line and how you need to trace a line as well. So that is what is being done in this video. This video is going to be really helpful to pe for people who are joining ship for the first time. So this is a line diagram that I've got from onboard ship and I'm going to discuss that as well. So that is what is being done. Let's have a look. See, there's a, I've written, if you're practically sound, then you're a fitter. If you're practically and theoretically sound, then you're an engineer. And for being an engineer, you need to understand the line diagrams. You need to understand what is wrong where. And that is why line diagrams play an important part. Please remember that aim at trouble to be a troubleshooter on ship this is the line diagram fitted this is something that you're going to find on board ship 
how to analyze how to read is an art and that is what i'm going to i'm teaching you right now over here another is a detailed main engine round at port it's a 20 minute long video guys it's a 20 minute long videos so i'm discussing about everything related to main engine that we can discuss at port say it can be about uh, spare piston spare liner kept as you can see about main engine about exhaust wall the pressure temperatures the pressure transmitters the temperature transmitters the cylinder head the jacket the crankcase the oil misfitters everything has been covered in these videos so where is the main starting air valve fitted where are the starting air valves fitted on board each unit well, how does the exhaust wall look like how do we measure the how do we see the exhaust gas temperatures fitted on the main engine how how big is the turbocharger where is the turbocharger blower fitted where is the turbocharger turbine fitted so this is the under piston space area out here that is what i'm showing so complete engine room round of main engine specifically oh god this is the air cooler fitted out here that is being discussed how does a jacket water cooler look like i guess this video is going to be really of great importance and very very important copied so if you have liked the video and you want to know more about visionary package what kind of videos are available go through the playlist available out here in which you'll find all the videos regarding visionary package Go through them and decide. Make your career bright. Jai Mataji.